from KSAT 12. The Night Beat starts right now. We begin tonight with the, the Uvalde community's anger and pain reaching a boiling point. Today, hundreds joined the Unheard Voices March and Rally in honor of the 19 students and two teachers who died in the Uvalde school massacre. Yeah, they're rallying for real change so that lives are never again taken in a mass shooting event. The night team's Camelia Wada spoke with victims' family members along with Texans who traveled miles to show their support for the community and frustrations with the investigation. In the sweltering heat, hundreds of people gathered at Robb Elementary and marched a mile to the main plaza, each person carrying signs, banners, and at the main plaza, family members of the 21 victims, each saying their loved one's name. Some families of the victims spoke publicly for the first time since the tragedy in late May. Everyone in Uvalde is up soon. Amory's family member criticized the law enforcement response, where police waited 77 minutes outside the classroom where students and teachers lay dying. I challenge all of you cowards that were in that class, in that hallway, to step down, turn in your badge, and resign. You do not deserve to wear a badge. You did not protect and serve. Another family member called out lawmakers who they say were absent during today's march. He believes representatives prioritize gun sales over people. You, we only ask that they place greater effort in keeping military style weapons from young adults under 21 years of age and expand background checks with delays, delays between purchasing and receiving the guns. It's very simple, but you continue to confuse us. We ask that you stop talking because every time you do, all you do is confuse us. We want you to take action. Jacqueline Cazetas' cousin called out Uvalde CISD school board for not providing safety on campus, a fear that rings true for parents across the state. Job to, to make sure children are safe and secure while attending school. It's your job to make sure parents can trust that their children will have a safe learning environment. It's sad that there are children and teachers that are afraid to come back to school. I know I am. That was Camelia Juarez reporting for us. A group of bipartisan lawmakers did just pass a bill that created more strict rules for gun buyers under 21 and granted more funding for school security. And the Uvalde County Sheriff Ruben Nolasco is expected to testify tomorrow before the Texas panel investigating the massacre at Robb Elementary. He'll participate via video teleconference. He initially refused to do so and then changed his mind after being issued an official notice. The Texas House Investigative Committee's preliminary report into the Uvalde school massacre could be released within the next 10 days. Tonight, ERCOT is urging Texas to conserve energy tomorrow as we're expected to see extreme temperatures again. The Electric Reliability Council of Texas operates the power grid for the state. In a press release, ERCOT is urging people and businesses to voluntarily conserve electricity tomorrow between the hours of 2 p.m. and 8 p.m. They've also issued what they call a watch for a projected reserve capacity shortage for the same time frame. However, they note in the release no system-wide outages are expected. ERCOT has been heavily scrutinized for its handling of the 2020 deadly winter storm. Yesterday, CPS Energy also encouraged people to conserve energy today and tomorrow. For a list of ways to do that, just head to KSAT.com. New on the night beat, we are learning a man is facing aggravated robbery charges in San Marcos. This after police say he attempted to shoot up an academy store with air guns that shoot pellets. That incident happened this evening, according to the San Marcos Police Department's Facebook page. They say the suspect allegedly stole three CO2 pistols, left the store and attempted to load the weapon in the parking lot. A witness called police and store employees began evacuating people through the back of the store. By the time police arrived on scene, the suspect re-entered the store and was stopped by an off-duty officer. No injuries were reported. We have a follow-up tonight on yesterday's threat against the San Antonio Jewish community. Temple Bethel Rabbi Mara Nathan is in Jerusalem, Israel right now, and today she sent a statement to her congregation back here at home. It reads in part, quote, We may have been separated by thousands of miles in a significant time zone difference, but I felt deeply connected to you all. 
despite the threat we experienced yesterday and all the other attacks against Jews and Jewish communities throughout our history, it is our sacred sense of connection and community that continues to be the source of redemption, end quote. To read that full statement, you can head to KSAT.com. To other stories we've been following this Sunday, a wrong way crash on Highway 151 is being investigated tonight after it left one driver dead and the other in serious condition. That crash happened around 2 a.m. on the highway near Callahan Road. When San Antonio police arrived on scene, they found both vehicles smashed into each other. One of the drivers pronounced dead at the scene. The Bear County Medical Examiner's Office is working to notify next of kin. The other driver taken to University Hospital. A man is facing manslaughter charges in connection with the crash that killed the passenger inside the vehicle on the south side. The crash happened around 2.20 a.m. on Via Main Road near South Pressa and Loop 410. San Antonio police say a vehicle was speeding when it veered off the road and crashed into two wooden poles, a light pole and a tree. A passenger was ejected from that vehicle and pronounced dead at the scene. The driver was taken to the hospital in serious condition. So I heard this loud roar, but thundering, but roaring. It was weird, and next thing I knew, I was on the ground, and the ceiling was about this far away from my face. You have seen her story before right here on KSAT. She's a survivor of the devastating earthquake that hit Haiti back in 2010. And now Bethley Paul is a U.S. citizen. The process more than a decade in the making. She sat down with the night team's Lee Waldman to tell her story on her path to citizenship. How are you, girl? What's popping? <laughs> you know? <laughs> It'll take about a minute into talking with 22 year old Bethley Paul for her to make you laugh. Oh, that was funny. <laughs> her bubbly personality and glowing spirit, they shine. Well, that's one word to describe me. Adventurous, I guess. <laughs> I like that. Paul's young life has been nothing short of a wild ride. She's worked as a flight attendant, traveling to new places and attended San Antonio College and UTSA studying psychology. I like giving to people, I like helping others. And lived through a 7.0 magnitude earthquake in Haiti that took the lives of 220,000 people. She nearly lost her leg after being crushed and trapped for hours in her school. That's when the moment I knew that I didn't know what was going to happen in my life. I did not know what was next. <laughs> Sorry. Hold on. I can't. Her life was saved by doctors at Christus Santa Rosa Children's Hospital, and she was taken in for two years by a familiar face. It feels good to have not just one set of family, but two sets of family cheering for me. Paul's mother and father are with her now in San Antonio. Her brother, little Leo, was born here. He's seven. He's my favorite person in the whole entire world. Cannot live without that dude. The two families, the Spreesters and the Pauls, cheered Bethley on as she became a U.S. citizen Friday. First American in the whole family who went through the process, and now my mom is motivated to go through the process. This, the latest chapter in her adventure of life. I am Bethley. I am Haitian. I am American. I am silly. <laughs> I am corny. I am someone who absolutely loves other people. Her smile just makes you smile. As far as what's next for Bethley, she wants to go back to being a flight attendant while she finishes her degree. In the future, she'd like to open up her own holistic clinic with medical techniques from around the world to help people in whatever way they need. Back to you. Thanks, Lee. The First Lady is making a trip to the Alamo City tomorrow. Dr. Jill Biden will be a speaker at the Latinx Inclusion Luncheon. That's a part of the UNIDOS uh, U.S. annual conference. The yearly event aims to bring people together to discuss issues on housing, health, racial equity and education, just to name a few. This is the first time the conference will be head held in person since COVID. Oh my goodness, take a look outside right now with live cam, a nice view of the city there. But just a few hours ago, we were at 106 in San Antonio for Boo. the high temperature. Yeah, that's right, Courtney, I second that. Boo. And guess what? Tomorrow? A couple of degrees hotter, too. Yeah, it's going to get worse before it gets better. Okay, let's take a look at the uh, high temperatures around South Central Texas. We got up to 107 Pleasanton, 107 Del Rio, 109 Catula, 104 in Kerrville. We also had some quick thunder showers in some areas, isolated, but still. And even now, at 10 p.m., it's 93, but it feels like 96 with high humidity. Uh, right now, outside, it's 98 in Catula, 97 Laredo, 85 in Del Rio. You can tell that Del Rio rocks. Springs and Kerrville got a little
little bit of a cool down from a shower or a thunder shower, but tomorrow excessive heat warning in place. Air temperature up to 108 with heat index values up to 112. Coming up, I'm going to show you how hot it's going to be in your neighborhood, and we're going to take a look at those who did get some rain today. Yosemite National Park on fire. More than 1,000 acres already burned. The latest efforts to stop the wildfire before it damages more of the historical park. Plus, her college options are overflowing. We'll introduce you to a local teen who now has thousands of dollars worth of scholarships and more than 20 acceptance letters. And a local veteran is breaking the stigma behind post-traumatic stress disorder. See how he hopes his path to recovery will motivate other vets to do the same. That's when we come back. Well, coming off of National Post-Traumatic Stress Disorder Awareness Month, a San Antonio Marine Corps veteran has spent time sharing his story with others in need. He said now with more troops returning from a difficult end to the war in Afghanistan, adjusting to civilian life is even harder. He told me about the barriers to care and which organization is helping address them. San Antonio War veteran Jonathan Shane Krebs spent four years as an Army paratrooper and seven and a half in the Marine Corps stationed in both Iraq and Afghanistan. I went through four IEDs, two suicide bombers, and a partially open parachute. Um, so I ended up with diagnosed with six traumatic brain injuries. He was eventually medically retired and diagnosed with severe PTSD. Back in the day, if you had severe PTSD or something like that, and you came forward with issues, uh, a, a lot of guys I knew got booted out of the, uh, the Army. And since then, a lot of those guys have committed suicide. Um, so that was a stigma for us. With a push from his wife, he finally reached out for help and is well into his recovery, working now as a trainer with Canines for Warriors. He says over a decade ago, he saw a big shift in the military's focus on PTSD and mental health, but the stigma still exists. Part of that is the individual um, that still believes mentally, I don't need the help, I'm fine, there's nothing wrong with me. And part of that is like the VA system. Like when I got out in 2012, and I went to for my PTSD treatment with the VA. It was a six month wait just to get in to see a doctor. That's where organizations like Mission Roll Call come in. They assist veterans in crisis, but also advocate on Capitol Hill for issues like suicide and access to care. Executive Director Cole Lyle says he almost became a suicide statistic, saying in a statement, had a fellow Marine not intervened, I wouldn't be here. We speak directly to our membership through regular interviews, polls, and town halls across the United States. Combined with empirical data, we use these stories to produce striking detailed images of issues affecting our community. Mission Roll Call recently polled its 1.4 million veteran members and found that 72 percent believe the recent Taliban advance through Afghanistan was a reason for personal reflection and sadness. I spent a lot more time sitting around drinking beer and just being angry. Uh, but you got to find a positive outlet. To, so, you know, like talking with the doctors, talking with my wife, talking with fellow veterans, you know, just venting and getting that off your chest is really what helps you to get through the situation. And to you veterans who are ready for help, he said, start at the VA, get your name on that wait list for a doctor, and in the meantime, head to one of their discussion or support groups available now. He said to be open with your military friends and lean on them as well. Head to the local VFW, get a service dog, or contact Mission Roll Call. Their information is on ksat.com. Just look for this story. All right, we have talked about how hot it is out there. This is dangerous type heat that yeah. we're experiencing now. No longer just, hey, it's hot. This is this is serious. Absolutely, and even that uh, appeal from ERCOT mm -hmm. to make sure to conserve energy between 2 to 8 p.m., that is going to be the peak heat of the day tomorrow. We're likely going to be even hotter than we were today by a couple of degrees, not only in South Central Texas, but across the state of Texas. It's going to be a hot one. We set a new record today, our high temperature of 100 one beats the old record by three degrees, 12 degrees above average. Our average high this time of year is 94. That's where we should be. And as I showed you earlier, everywhere else across the KSAT 12 viewing area dealing with temperatures well above average. And we really don't see all that much of a cool down. Now we're going to substantially be better by Thursday and Friday, but still 99 is hot. Tomorrow, 107 for the high temperature. 
beating a record and on Tuesday close to the record 103 and even once we get a little bit of relief from the triple digit weather we're going to go right back to it over the weekend so we are stuck in a rut in fact we're projecting 13 100 degree days in a row today is 10 we're probably gonna have three more and so that would put this year, uh, this triple digit streak of 13, our third longest triple digit streak on record and records go back to 1885. So just to further submit that this is a, a very unusually hot summer that we're dealing with. Now, it wasn't all bad news around the KSAT 12 air viewing area. We did have areas of isolated to scattered rain, especially west of San Antonio into the hill country near uh, Bandera County and also for Del Rio. Del Rio got some decent rain in, in pockets. Areas that got rain got anywhere from half an inch to an inch of rainfall. Some folks unfortunately got a little bit less. In fact, we'll go ahead and look at some of these rainfall totals here. Uh, at least radar estimated rainfall totals closer to San Antonio. You can see up into Kendall County, northern Kendall County, there was a good amount of rain. And closer to San Antonio, right near the Stone Oak area, up to about an inch of radar estimated rainfall. Now, a lot of the rain was actually evaporating before it hit the surface. So this may be overdoing it just a little bit, but for the rest of us, it was just plain old hot outside and we're going to have more chances for rain tomorrow, but a lot like today, they're going to be isolated and during the peak heat of the day between about 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. You can see on the high rise future cast that this particular model does show up some uh, showers and storms isolated popping up around the San Antonio metro area. Once again, if you get rain, you'll be lucky. The rest of us are just going to be very hot. This is a look at forecast highs for the day tomorrow. 110. 10 in Del Rio, 109 in Honda, 108 Uvalde, 108 in Pleasanton, 105 in Kerrville. And I'm going to show you a neighborhood view here. If you're in Seguin, 107, Converse Area, 108, Port Essay, 109, and Sabinal, 109, 108 in Pleasanton, and 107 in the Nixon Smiley area. On top of it, we're also going to have humidity tomorrow, too. So temperatures will be at 107 tomorrow in San Antonio, but it could feel up to 110 throughout out the day tomorrow that heat index will feel about two to three degrees warmer. Your body is just not going to be able to cool off as easily because the humidity will be a bit higher. So just to recap everything, here's your KSAT 12 hour forecast early tomorrow morning. It's already going to be 80 degrees. You got to walk the dog early in the morning tomorrow because this heat stress is going to be not only difficult for us, but also for your pups already 90 by 10 o'clock in the morning, 97 around noon and in the afternoon. That's when we have that measly 20% chance for an isolated shower or storm from 3 p.m. till about 8 p.m. And that's also when we're going to be the hottest 107 for the high temperature. Yes, it is going to be very hot. We're going to shatter some records tomorrow and in the week ahead. Really only a few rain chances here and there again during the peak heat of the day. Temperatures will come down a little bit, but still 99 is hot, but I'll take 99 over 107. Courtney and Tim coming up. I'm going to talk about the tropics in the next half hour. 107. Please be careful if you're going outside. Drink plenty of fluids. All right, Greg Simmons will have a preview of instant replay right after this. The Spurs back in action in the NBA Summer League tonight. Let's find out hey, they, how they did by checking in with our Greg Simmons. Well, the trick is they needed to win a game, and yes. that did not happen. And on hand at the Summer League games, former Spur DeJounte Murray, now a member of the Atlanta Hawks. You will hear from him tonight, coming up tonight on a brand new edition of Instant Replay. Wesley, back to back, and the Spurs retake the lead, the rookie. The Young Gun Spurs wrap up their second game of the Summer League after 20 points in his first game. Could Blake Wesley repeat the feat? And what does Ajante Murray have to say in his first interview since his first press conference in Atlanta as a member of the Hawks? Things that you saw in college really are transferring here to the NFL level. When the starting quarterback trusts you and you're a young receiver, Hey, you're on your way to some positive things. All right, we are only 14 days away from the NFL training camps kicking off the 2022 season. Tonight, we'll pick the brains of six Dallas sports writers who only follow the Cowboys to get you up to speed on what you need to know for training camp. Plus, the sports guys are here to weigh in on the strengths and weaknesses of the team. And do the Cowboys have what it takes to win the NFC? Still the 
How about that? Novak Djokovic wins his seventh Wimbledon championship. We'll show you how he did it after winning the first half of the season championship. The missions are off to a slow start in the second half. Can the missions get the bats working again in time for the playoffs? And you won't believe the contract the Blazers guard Damian Lillard just signed is worth more than $1.1 million a week. That's right, more than $1.1 million a week. You can guess for how many years. All that plus, who takes over as the Spurs go-to guy? Now that DeJounte Murray's been traded tonight, you decide instant replay is live and is after the night beat. Lots to talk about. I'm sure you feel real bad about having to go to Oxnard, California for just, two weeks. Uh, just 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 awful. such a crushing moment for me. Terrible. Yeah. Thanks, Greg. We'll see you again in a little bit. All right, her future is bright after securing thousands of dollars worth of scholarships. What this local team plans to do in order to inspire young girls everywhere. Plus, what we know about the man accused of assassinating the former Japanese prime minister and how the U.S. is showing its support of the country in mourning. And a historic national park still in danger from flames. What's at risk in the wildfire at Yosemite as it continues to burn? We'll be right back. A wildfire burning in one of the most popular national parks in the U.S. has doubled in size just this weekend. Threatening Yosemite's famed giant sequoias and forcing an evacuation of the nearby community and campground. The Washburn fire has burned more than 1,500 acres as of Sunday afternoon. And as Meredith Wood reports, Mother Nature could make things even harder for crews this week. And there's airplanes flying, there's helicopters flying by. Attacking a growing fire from the air and from the ground as the Washburn fire burning in Yosemite National Park doubles in size, growing more than 400 acres overnight, triggering evacuations and threatening the famed grove of giant sequoia trees. It's terrible. I mean, every fire is scary and our hearts go out to all the folks that have had to been evacuated. Hundreds of firefighters are battling dangerous terrain as they work to save the ancient trees and keep the flames away from homes. Crews resorting to a sprinkler system to protect Mariposa Grove, which is home to more than 500 giant sequoia trees, with some more than 2,000 years old. I'm standing right in front of the grizzly giant, which is arguably one of the most famous trees on Earth. We really don't want to leave this one to chance because this really is such an iconic tree. The flames growing dangerously close to the Wawana campground and community nearby, forcing officials to issue evacuation orders. Heartbreaking. You feel afraid for the people in the town of Wawona. It's a really cute town. And there's growing concern that weather could hamper the firefighting efforts, with temperatures expected to get hotter through the week. But crews are hopeful nearby fire scars from previous fires could help slow down active flames. It looks uh, pretty scary, and I, we're going full force on our suppression tactics. I'm Meredith Wood reporting. Cal Fire officials say the fire broke out back on July 7th and the cause of that fire is under investigation. They're also battling the Electra fire, which has scorched more than 4,400 acres in the Sierra Nevada foothills near Sacramento. Well, a 90 member task force is now investigating the assassination of former Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. The vigil is scheduled for tomorrow, followed by a funeral on Tuesday for family and close friends. Japanese officials say a lone attacker shot Abe with a homemade gun during a campaign speech on Friday. Security quickly tackling the suspect to the ground, but Abe died at the hospital. An autopsy reveals he died of blood loss. His body then driven to his home in Tokyo, as is tradition in Japan. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken is set to pay his respects during a visit to Japan. This is a tragedy for Japan, a tragedy for his family and loved ones and all who knew him, uh, but also for the world. The accused assassin confessed to the killing. A top Japanese police official acknowledges possible security lapses that allowed the shooter to kill Abe. Making headlines back here in the U.S., the plant at the center of the nationwide baby formula shortage is open again. The Abbott formula plant in Sturgis, Michigan, was shut down for three weeks because of flooding from severe storms recently. That's, of course, after the months-long shutdown after an FDA inspection found deadly bacteria in the plant. The production had been up and running for less than two weeks before the storm forced the company to close it again to review the damage and then clean and re-sanitize the plant. For parents around the country who've anxiously watched these closures, the FDA says more supply is on the way. 
Well, there were some tense moments at the world's busiest airport Sunday after a plane's brakes caught fire at the Hartsfield-Jackson International Airport in Atlanta. Smoke and flames could be seen coming from the landing gear on Spirit Airlines Flight 383 after it landed. Passengers on the flight, which originated in Tampa, started to panic, but the flight attendants did keep them calm. Atlanta Fire and Rescue responded quickly and put out the fire. The airplane had to be towed to a gate as it continued to spew black smoke across the tarmac. There were no injuries reported. A life-saving change is coming to some baby products, and it's something parents should want to know about. It involves products sold for sleep. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz explains some new guidelines and what parents should do to be sure their babies are safe. Rocking the baby often helps get him to nod off to sleep. But as we've reported, the Consumer Product Safety Commission and two manufacturers warn, don't use these rockers for infant sleep. At least 13 deaths are tied to this Fisher Price rocker and one death tied to this Kids 2 rocker. While companies say these rockers are not intended for sleep, we know that parents and caregivers sometimes use them for that purpose, and the same goes for other infant seats and swings. Similar to the incline sleepers that Congress recently banned, it's the baby's reclined position that makes these products dangerous for any period of sleep. Products that place an infant in a reclined sleeping position increase the risk of suffocation, causing an infant's head to tilt forward and compress the airway. And that's what new regulations are meant to address. All infant sleep products manufactured must now meet minimum safety requirements that align with American Academy of Pediatrics guidelines. Babies should sleep alone on a flat surface. But Consumer Report says it's okay to let your baby sleep for short stretches in the car seat while driving. Car seat design allows for babies to safely be in a semi-reclined position while also giving them the protection that they need in a crash when the car seat is installed properly in the vehicle. Be sure the child is securely harnessed. If your baby falls asleep in a car seat, rocker, bouncer, or swing, experts say move them to a safe sleep space as soon as possible. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Well, starting today, the price to mail a first-class letter from the U.S. Postal Service is up. Also, a forever stamp will cost 60 cents when the post office opens on Monday. In addition to the two-cent price increase on first-class stamps, other postal services will also cost more. Everything from postcards to certified mail to money order fees will also be subjected to rate hikes. The Postal Service says the rate hike amounts to about 6.5 percent increase across the board, but they point out the added expense is still less than the rate of inflation, which is nearly 8 percent. Probably won't stop the junk mail from showing up either. No, wow. Well, probably not. <laughs> no. I feel like we've been spammed by Mother Nature. We're dealing with temperatures Since well like above. May. I know, well above average. We had the hottest May on record, the hottest June on record, and we've had 10 100 degree days to start off July. Today, 106 for the high temperature. We beat that record by 103 degrees. That gives us 32 100 degree days so far this year. We've still got the rest of July, all of August, and even some of September to get through. And tomorrow, heat warnings, excessive heat warning in place around the KSAT 12 viewing area, San Antonio metro area, air temperatures up to 108 feeling up to 112. Coming up though, we do have a small window for rain tomorrow. I'll show you that future cast in a bit. Tim. Thank you, Sarah. The God of Thunder striking the box office this week to see if it beat out the competition like Elvis shaking his hips and the minions and the rise of Guru. We'll have to see what happened there. And she's got big dreams and goals that are all possible after being awarded 10 scholarships, what she plans to do for college after getting thousands to pay for it. Through hard work and dedication, a local student received thousands of dollars through scholarships. And get this, she was admitted to over 20 universities and colleges. Very impressive. Yeah. She will now attend her dream school and hopes to get into the field of STEM. Tiffany Huerta shares her message to young girls and how she wants to give back. I've won the scholarships from Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority, from the MLK Scholarship Commission. I've also won scholarships from the Bomberger Endowment.
from organizations to pageants, Sydney Jackson has won 10 scholarships with thousands of dollars going towards her education. Growing up on the east side of San Antonio as a black girl going into STEM and cybersecurity specifically, I believe that that story set me apart from other candidates. Sydney attended St. Phillips College Early College High School. It truly helped me get prepared for college because you had your full high school schedule and then you had to also learn time management skills and attend all of your college classes while turning in all of your work and also doing extracurriculars. In May, she graduated with her high school diploma diploma. This summer, she will be graduating with an associate's degree. St. Phillips, they had a degree plan called Information Technology Cybersecurity, and that really taught me about security defense and cyber defense. Sydney will be attending UTSA in the fall. She is interested in joining student government and tech-related clubs, and she has even bigger goals for the future. I just believe that cyber awareness has become my passion and I definitely want to create programs and work at the National Security Agency in the future to help Americans stay cyber safe. Sydney hopes to inspire young girls to dream big. Everyone has a story and as long as you put in the work, your story is valuable no matter who you are or where you come from. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. More than 30 million people across the country are under heat alerts today. Well, they were from the southern and central plains to the southwest and northern California. That means temps starting in the 90s and getting well into the triple digits like we've seen here. Up to 112 in parts of the Pacific Northwest, as high as 117 degrees in parts of the southwest. Luckily, most of these areas are expected to cool off tonight and into Monday. However, we know... The heat is going to continue here in San Antonio. Yeah, it's pretty rough. And even mm -hmm. get worse tomorrow. We're going to be a few degrees hotter tomorrow, and that is impressive considering we were at 106 today. Let's take a look at those highs across the KSAT 12 viewing area. It got up to 109 in Catula, 104 in Kerrville, 106 in New Braunfels, 107 in Gonzales, 107 in Pleasanton, 107 in Del Rio. And just as it got to the hottest temperatures here, some 12 degrees above average, we we also saw some convective thunderstorms that developed. That's the meteorology word for you today. Basically, they're thunderstorms that don't need any kind of forcing from a cold front or an upper level low. The only thing they need is for the ground to be really hot. And that was the case today. That's why we saw some isolated showers and storms develop. Here's a look at today's radar estimated rainfall. Some good rain out west in spots in Valverde County, closer to Del Rio, Lake Amistad, and up in northern parts parts of Valverde County, then across parts of the hill country, particularly in Bandera County, some decent rain pockets of up to uh, an inch of radar estimated rain uh, near uh, southeast of Kerrville and then in San Antonio or closer to San Antonio on the northeast side of town along 281 there from uh, 1604 all the way up toward Bulverde and Timberwood Park. We saw some decent rain in pockets uh, near Canyon Lake as well and just to the east of Seguin along 90 there. Rain was few and far between, only a 20% coverage around San Antonio. And we're going to see a very similar story tomorrow, with the big weather story being the heat and the second or secondary weather story being that isolated shower or storm. 93 outside right now. It feels like 96 outside right now at 1030. 47 this evening. That's how hot it is still out there. And as you take you through the future cast, you can see that as we get close to those convective temperatures or the temperature at which clouds will freely develop ahead in the afternoon from 3 to 8 p.m., that's when we have that 20% chance for isolated showers and storms, first in the hill country and then into the San Antonio metro area closer to 5, 6 o'clock in the afternoon and early evening. A lot like today, once we lose the daytime heating, those rain chances will go away. Otherwise, this is how hot it's going to be. 107 in San Antonio, 108 in Converse, 108 in New Braunfels, 109 in Sabinal, 108 in Uvalde, 107 in Floresville, 108 in Pleasanton, even the Hill Country, 106 in Canyon Lake, 105 in Bernie. Real deal heat 
and your body is going to have a difficult time cooling off tomorrow too because even though the humidity is going to come down into the 60s in the afternoon that is still humid enough to make it feel up to 110 tomorrow. That is why we have heat warnings in place from 1 p.m. to 8 p.m. tomorrow because if you don't stay hydrated it's going to be very difficult if you have to do outdoor activities to stay cool tomorrow. All right. For your forecast for the day tomorrow, 107 for the afternoon high after waking up close to 80 degrees in the morning. So if you need to get anything done, do it early in the morning. The heat high is not our friend. It is maintaining its strength and it's really going to be the dominant weather factor over the coming days. Meanwhile, though, there's an area of uh, disorganized storms out in Georgia that's actually anticipated to move into the Gulf and it has about a 30% chance of development into a tropical tropical system. Here's the thing though. Right now, all indications are that any rain would be along the Louisiana uh, out to Florida coast with us mainly being dry in San Antonio. This is it for our rain chances tomorrow. 20% 3 to 8 p.m. Tuesday and Wednesday only 10% and then we bump it up slightly on Thursday and Friday. But the big picture is there's no soaking rainfall that will help out drought conditions widespread around South Central Texas. Instead, tomorrow 107 quote unquote cooling down in the week ahead, but still 103 on Tuesday, 101 on Wednesday, 99 is the coolest will be over the next seven days on Thursday and Friday. We bump up those highs back into the triple digits over the weekend. We're going to keep you uh, aware throughout this heat wave on air, online and on the KSAT Weather Authority app. If we get a pop up thunder shower, I'll go. We'll go live from the app like I did earlier today. Yeah, always very helpful. The weather app. Thank you, Sarah. The competition is tight at the box office. The latest Minions movie has been in top place, but can it sustain that after the release of the latest Marvel movie? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. Find out after the break. <laughs> what are they? That's another plane, right? Jurassic World Dominion stomped its way to a fifth place finish with $8.4 million, bringing its domestic box office total to just over $350 million. Elvis played in fourth place on ticket sales of $11 million, while Top Gun Maverick dove into third with $15.5 million. Yeah! <laughs> Minions The Rise of Gru finished second, making off with $45.6 million, bringing its domestic box office total to just over $210 million after two weekends in theaters. Thor Love and Thunder hammered its way to a first place win with an estimated $143 million. That figure combined with international box office numbers gives Love and Thunder a worldwide box office total of $302 million. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Former Spur DeJounte Murray speaks out at the NBA Summer League Games. And with the Dallas Cowboys training camp now just two weeks away, we visit with the experts to see what we're in store for this season. With more on what's on Instant Replay, let's head over to Greg Simmons. Oh, I wish, after watching what y'all just reported, it's one week away. <laughs> I know. It's just too hot tomorrow. Now, after, after this weekend off, what lies ahead for San Antonio FC? Coming up tonight on a brand new edition of Instant Replay. Do I think the Cowboys will be... Uh, a top three team with the Rams, with the Packers. Well, we'll get the answer to that. Cowboys training camp starts two weeks from tomorrow. Do the Cowboys look like they're ready to take the next step, becoming a real contender of the NFC? We asked six Dallas Cowboys beat reporters for their opinions. The boys in blue plus the sports guys will fill you in on a position that could be the Achilles heel of the team. Whoever's jersey you put on, that's what you represent. And then, you know, I'm a hawk and I'm excited. All right, DeJounte Murray speaks out of the NBA Summer League in Las Vegas in his first interview since he was introduced as a member of the Atlanta Hawks following the Spurs' blockbuster trade. And where does San Antonio FC stand after their hard-earned bye week? All that plus, how do the Spurs perform in their second NBA Summer League game? And a shot at the Scottish Open you have to see to believe. Instant Replay is live, and it is next. We will stick around to see what you've got. Thank you. Before Thank you, you jet off to California. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> the cool off. All right, we'll be back right after this. Finally tonight, let's tell you something good. Well, this will get your adrenaline going. The running of the Bulls in Pamplona, Spain, oh, returned yes. today. It's the fourth time this week. Hundreds showed up to see if they could survive. Run. Only four people were taken to the hospital. That sounds weird to say. Only, Only four. 
This is all part of the annual San Fermin Festival. It's been canceled the past two years due to COVID. One bull can weigh more than 1,300 pounds. And they look really fast when they're coming down a narrow street at you. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Oh, I can't believe we haven't had that for two years. I feel like that <laughs> ought to be a part of instant replay tonight. <laughs> so that's case. all of our time for all of us here at KSAT 12. Greg agrees. <laughs> be sure to tune into Good Morning San Antonio for all your latest overnight news. That only was your replay starts right now. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to a brand new edition of Instant Replay. After getting off on the wrong foot in their opener in the NBA Summer League on Friday, where they lost to Cleveland 99-90, the Spurs are looking to bounce back tonight when they face the Golden State Warriors in Las Vegas on game day. 25th overall pick Blake Wesley put on quite the show in game one against the Cavaliers with game high 20 points. He was rolling again early tonight against Golden State. First quarter, Wesley steps back, drains a triple. He got five of the Spurs' first seven points. A few plays later, Joshua Primo comes alive, hits a three ball of his own, and San Antonio now leads 13 11. Darius Days, when muscles his way to the basket, gets it to fall, count it, and one. But the Spurs trail 24 23 after one. Second quarter now, Primo finds 20th overall pick Malachi Branham for a straightaway three. San San Antonio goes up by six. Days ends the half with yet another three. San Antonio hits seven threes in the first half, outscoring Golden State 25 to 10 in the second, and they leave 48 34 at the break. Third quarter, Wesley takes control of the game again, this time with a jumper inside the arc. San Antonio leads 54 38, but the Warriors start to rally behind Jonathan. Kaminga and cut the deficit down to seven. Heading into the fourth quarter, Golden State keeps it going. Mac McClung, the former Texas Tech Red Raider, dazzles the crowd with a beautiful reverse layup, and we're tied at 74. And with two minutes to play, Spurs find themselves down four. Wesley asserts himself once again with back-to-back -back transition three-pointers. His second one gives San Antonio the lead back, 85-83. Wesley finished with a team high, 22 points, but the Warriors take the lead on this free throw from Kaminga with eight seconds left. The Spurs have a chance to push for the game-winning basket, but Wesley fumbles the ball away as the buzzer sounds. That's how this one ends. Here's the final score, 86-85. The San Antonio is now 0-2 in summer league play. How did it feel going up against some of the Warriors' regular bench players like James Wiseman and Jonathan Kaminga? Oh, it was actually fun, you know, seeing those guys on TV, you know, being out there on the court with them at the same time, you know, it's, it's, it really was cool, but, you know, we all play basketball, we got to be, we got to compete, so, you know, they came out on top, you know, we, there's some things that we could have cleaned up, but, you know, we're going we to we shake back and get back next time. It's guys like that where you want to compete against, you want to prove yourself, you want to show that you can contain them and give them problems too. We're trying to learn how to win, uh, you know, a lot of young guys here, so games like that, uh, you know, you never want to lose close games, but they teach you how to win them. All right, with the departure of DeJounte Murray to the Hawks, Lonnie Walker, the four to the Lakers, it leaves the Spurs short on corporate knowledge. Jakob Pertl is the most tenured Spur, but he could be headed out the door since he's in the last year of his contract. There are rumors that as many as four teams are interested in trading for the center. If that happens, that leaves 22-year-old Keldon Johnson with the most minutes in silver and black. Johnson's about to start his fourth season, coming off a career year, playing in 75 games. Starting 74, he averaged 17 points, 6.1 rebounds, and 2.1 assists, all career best. How does Keldon feel about taking more of a leadership role. It's definitely a big opportunity, you know. Um, we, like I said before, we, we lost some big pieces, but, uh, you know, it's just time to step up. You know, we got to keep evolving, keep getting better, keep grinding. And, um, I mean, i kind of been in the system the longest, so I feel like, uh, you know, just, just leading these guys, telling them, tell them the ins and outs, and, uh, you know, we all, we all going to have learning moments in the upcoming years. So, uh, you know, it's going to be up and down, but uh, just staying even killed throughout that and, you know, continue to be myself through the thick and thin. All right, here's a look at the Spurs summer league schedule as it continues tomorrow against the Rockets at 6 p.m. and against the Hawks on Thursday at 2. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Can you believe this? We're just two weeks and 12 hours away from the start of the NFL training camps. And for the record, no, I'm not counting down the days until I get to get out of this Texas heat and into the sunny and cool weather California offers for the Cowboys training camp. And to get you ready for it, with the help of our friends at KTVT in Dallas, we polled the six people who cover the Cowboys more than anyone else. We talked to reporters from ESPN, The Athletic, USA Today, the Dallas Morning News, and the Fort Worth Star-Telegram, and wanted to know their opinions on the Cowboys' upcoming season. So after watching a month of OTAs and many camp practices who was the player that made their biggest impression on them so far 
One of the rookie receivers, Jalen Tolbert, has been pretty impressive. I think Jalen Tolbert, the third round pick, the wide receiver, I think he, he's had some good moments. And they'll need him, obviously, with Michael Gallup's situation, so they'll need him to play. You look at the Cowboys wide receivers at the end of spring, four of the top five guys were not available because of injury. So it was a real opportunity for Tolbert to step up, and I really believe he did. And Dak tr Prescott trusts him. And when the starting quarterback trusts you and you're a young receiver, hey, you're on your way to some positive things. I would say it'd be Dak Prescott. Just he talked a little bit. Uh, about just being leaner, being more mobile, and you can kind of see that with some of the progressions and things that he was going through. See, last year that was a big talking point because of the fact that he was coming back from the ankle injury. Demarcus Lawrence, you know, talk about Dak Prescott. Here's a guy who really hasn't had a full offseason in the past because of injuries, overcoming different things. Even going back to when he signed his contract, he's healthy, leaner, and ready to go for the first time, you know, again, since he signed his contract. And then another name I'll give you is wide receiver Dennis Houston, who really, it's kind of like you see the number and you're like, who's that on the roster? But he's flashed. All right, okay, question number two. What position the Cowboys' greatest strength heading into training camp? You think the defense is going to be better. Micah Parsons, you know, building on his fantastic rookie year, and you know he's a freak. The thing that you know this defense is going to be better year two under Dan Quinn. It's pretty much Micah Parsons to me and, and Trayvon Diggs. However they're used, the combination of them with, with Dan Quinn, I think that that's the greatest strength. Now, I would probably say the Cowboys' greatest position of strength right now is running back. Ezekiel Elliott is healthy. Tony Pollard looks like his usual self and then the depth behind them. Relative to the NFC East, I would definitely say quarterback is their biggest strength. I think that Dak is far and away the best quarterback in the division. Now that he's healthy with this offseason, he's moving a lot better. We want to see, can he take this to the next level? Can he elevate the guys around him? All right, now that we've heard what the strengths of the team are, let's take a more critical eye and figure out which positions are the biggest concern for the boys in blue. They do have some concerns uh, on the offensive line, but if, if Tyron Smith can be what they think he could be, then they'll be okay. And if Tyler Smith could be what they're hoping he could be at left guard, they'll be fine. I think the offensive line is probably the biggest question because if they play well, that helps everything. From the defense, sure, but it helps Zeke and it helps Dak. And that's how this, that's how this team has to run. I would say the biggest question mark going into training camp is wide receiver. I'd put receiver as the biggest question mark. I think receiver is a question. You're kind of wanting to see something from James Washington, see a little bit more from Jalen Tolbert. These wide receivers are going to be taking over these big areas on the team, and, and you just didn't get to see that because of injuries. All right, and last, after winning the NFC East for the third time in the last five seasons, do the Cowboys have what it takes to finally be a real contender for the NFC Championship and even make it to the Super Bowl? I don't think it's, it's one thing you can put your finger on it. You know, winners win. You know, and, and, and this team has to find guys who are going to show up and show out in the in most important games in the playoffs. You want to think that they're close to winning the NFC championship, but until we even see someone repeat the NFC East back-to-back -back years, I'm hesitant to say they're that close. Parcells says just get in the tournament and you have a chance. And, uh, you know, they're still the favorite in the NFC East in my mind, even though no one's repeated as division champs since 03, 04. But do I think the Cowboys will be uh, – a top three team with the Rams, with the Packers, Tampa. I think those three teams are probably ahead of everybody else and the Cowboys are at next mix. So it seems like it's kind of the same spot they were in a year ago. All right, time now for tonight's answer replay poll question. Who will be the Spurs go-to guy now that DeJounte Murray has been traded? Will it be Josh Primo, Trey Jones, Devin Vassell, or Keldon Johnson? Vote now. We'll have the results at the end of the broadcast tonight. Still to come on this edition of Instant Replay. I don't even think I'm in my prime or that close to it. You know, I just came back from an injury, man, and people don't realize that. For the first time since his introductory press conference, DeJounte Murray is talking here. What the former Spur has to say about his future in Atlanta. The sports guys also weigh in with their opinions on the Cowboys to get you ready for training camp in two weeks. Plus, the missions are the champs of the first half of the season, but after a slow start to the second half, can the missions get back on track? The Scottish Open features one of the craziest coincidences in recent golf history. And does Damian Lillard deserve the contract of a lifetime? The sports guys are back tonight when Instant Replay continues live next.